Hey guys and welcome back to the Simple Kai Guy channel. Today we will use this Romandis SM601 smoke machine to check for vacuum leaks on my BMW Z4. Now, why would you want to check for vacuum leaks? Well, if your car has a rough idle, dies out of nowhere, sputters, has a hissing sound coming from the engine bay, or there is an air fuel ratio code present, you may have a vacuum leak. To fix one of those, you will first have to find it. In the past, I've used one of these homemade paint can smoke machines and, and they sort of work, but stuff starts coming loose and you're leaking smoke everywhere. So not great, but for the same price, you can get one of these. So let me show you what you get in the box first and then we'll get to testing. All right, so here's the SM601 smoke machine up close. And as we can already see, it is much smaller than the paint can version, which is obviously very good. But let's see what else we can learn from the box and what goodies are hiding inside. So this is the Romandis or Romandis, not really sure, automotive diagnostic leak detector. It uses shop air, so that could be a positive or a negative depending on you know what you have. Nitrogen compatible, could use all, on all kinds of cars, motorcycles, snowmobiles, very good, quick smoke generation. So that's very useful. You don't have to wait for minutes at a time. Non-hazard smoke, all right. Smoke flow control, which is, I think is gonna be this right here. Cool, let's, let's go to this side. Let's see what's included in the package. So we have the main unit, the hook, so you can hang it, let's say on your uh, hood of the car or something like that. Power cord, hose, evap kit, so that's cool. And the air adapter. So that's gonna go to your, uh, uh, basically shop supply. All right here in the back we have the application so it can be used for the evaporative system, gaskets and fittings, throttle shafts, catalytic converters, diaphragm seats, all kinds of stuff obviously in here. So we'll test it on a couple of them and see how it works. Here are the instructions if you want to pause. Obviously I'll go over the instructions later in the video and show you how to use it. But basically you put it together, put some oil in it, make it generate smoke, put it inside the vacuum system in your car and see if there is a leak. That's all it does. But let's go to this side. So we have step one, make smoke. Step two, find where it's leaking from. And then some of the product factors, I think they mean specs. Out, output pressure is half a PSI, which is good. So it's not gonna break anything in your system. Output volume is eight, I believe this is liter per meter. Uh, not exactly sure, I'll have to look that up. Power supply, 12 volt DC. So that's gonna be from your car battery and it uses five amps. All right, anything in here? Yes, there is. All right, so you're gonna be using your baby oil or mineral oil, um, which is good. Most likely it's not gonna be toxic, so don't use anything that's like something else. All right, let's open it up and see what we got. All right, this is very nicely packaged. So that's gonna be the hose itself. Nice rubbery, almost silicone-like rubber. Oh, it's even smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's awesome. As long as it generates enough smoke. We got the hook. We got our power leads. And we have the EVAP adapter and the, uh, the one that goes to your compressor. All right, so here is the unit itself. Oh, this is much smaller than I thought it was going to be, which is awesome. I really, really like that. You can regulate the smoke from here. Oh yeah, that's the unit itself. You have your power on off button here in the back. Power plug, that's gonna be where your air is coming out from, I believe. All right. Very cool, very cool. Let's get this set up and find some leaks. All right, so here it is fully assembled. We have our air compressor quick release. We have the hook connector. This is where you fill the mineral oil. And then this is you're gonna be max. So we're gonna fill it from here and see once it reaches this point. Then we also have a power on and off button, power connector plugged in and the hose that will be actually expelling the smoke here as well. So pretty easy to configure so far. Let's go down back to the car and get testing. Before we start testing, I did put some Teflon tape on this connector right here and tighten it to as tight as I could with my hands and now it's no longer leaking any air. So that's probably something you'll have to do as well. So I'm just going to use this mineral oil I got from my local grocery store and fill the unit. 
So I only have that much left. I hope that's enough. And hopefully it won't spill too much. Oh well, it doesn't need much at all. As you can see, I'm already at maximum right there. So for power, what you would normally do is connect the negative to your ground and then the positive to the positive uh, connection on your car over there. I don't really like connecting, you know, different devices to my electrical system on the BMW because they can get finicky. So I'm just going to use a separate battery that I just have laying around my old battery from the car. All right, so it's plugged in. It has power. I'm gonna connect the air now. And here on this side, we have a little regulator to see how much uh, actual smoke is. Look, it's already smoking. Wow, that was really fast. So we can have a lot of smoke. Whew, okay, that went in my face. Or close it completely so there is no smoke being introduced here. Very cool. The old stuff I used before, that paint can stuff, yeah, it just, you plug it in and it's parking and producing smoke. This is way more advanced. Look at that. So cool. And that's a lot of smoke too. Awesome. Now that we have our smoke machine working properly, it's producing dense smoke and it's producing it consistently. Now we need to prepare the car. In order to prepare the car, we have to block off exits where the air could escape, right? So in this case, if we were to introduce the smoke into one of the vacuum lines or into the intake system, it will just exit through the filter out of, the, out of this part where the air normally enters the car, right? So we have to take the air filter off or at least get this charge pipe to the side where we can block it or we can actually use it to introduce the smoke into the system. So let's do that now. This. All right, so now we have our pipe where we can introduce the smoke. Of course, you can get a BMW specialized uh, tool that will fit into this pipe and then block it completely. But what I've decided to do is just use this cutout of rubber cutout that I got from like an old tire tube from my motorcycle. And I'm gonna go around it like that and then use the same clamp that was holding it onto the air filter to hold it in place. It should be pretty much airtight. Let's give that a try. All right, guys, so let's put all of this together now. What I'm going to do is put as much volume of uh, smoke and air as possible. I'm going to turn it on. It is on. Let's see how long it takes to start making that smoke. All right, we're making smoke already. And it's getting denser and stronger as it's warming up. Look at that, that's perfect. So I've decided to use this vacuum line to introduce the smoke into the system. So let's bring up the flow. There you go, plenty of smoke. Put that in. And now get this, get rid of this one. And now we wait and see if there's any smoke coming anywhere else. All right, so as you can see, there is a tiny bit coming from here. So maybe this line right here is not fully, fully uh, secured. Okay, so that's good to know. I am looking at other parts of the car, so let me take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you around. And we have a tiny leak over here on the valve regulator, I believe. Now let's move around the car and see if there's anything else. Okay, I do see a tiny bit of leakage on my on my uh, job right here, but that's not that much. I don't think you can even see it on uh, on the camera, so that's good. I'm gonna check around a little more, see if there's anything else. All right, nothing else. So this seems to be good. Looks like this car only has a tiny, tiny leak over there. Uh, which could be the cause of my uh, code that I received a couple of times. It's not. It doesn't happen all the time. But once in a while, I will get a code that says that fuel air ratio is a little bit too lean, which this could definitely cause. Just to show you what a bad leak would look like, I have connected the smoke to a vacuum pipe on the other side. And what I'm going to do is just disconnect this one right here. This is also a vacuum line. See right there? So if you see something like this, you have a big, big problem, right? Of 
course, hopefully you don't see anything like that and it's just a tiny little bit somewhere where you may need to change a gasket or uh, tighten up the clamp, whatever it may be. This is a good way to find out. All right, so what have we learned today? Well, I think we've learned that this little device can save you a lot of time and money by doing this yourself. A shop would definitely charge you at least a few hundred dollars to do this test and you can get the device for a little under a hundred dollars and the mineral oil is like two dollars at your grocery store or your Walgreens or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it produces a lot of smoke, which is what you want. Pretty decent pressure for what you would be using this for. But we've learned that you can troubleshoot your car on your own without having to take it to a shop. Of course, you may want to get one of these plugs yourself. You know, they're probably like five, 10 bucks on Amazon. So get one of those to plug it up easier and use one of the other lines to put the smoke in. Of course, you can do what I did and just DIY it, but you know, it's a little bit fiddly, that's for sure. So if your car has one of the symptoms that I mentioned earlier, stuttering or not running well, or you have idle issues, or even one of those uh, fuel to air ratio uh, codes, uh, this will definitely help you troubleshoot it and get you on the right way. You know, if you find a leak, you can fix it, test it again, make sure everything is good, run the car, and you'll probably get the issue fixed yourself in just a couple of hours. On that note, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave your comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one.